Hey, it's Alex. This is the uh, third and final part of my FPS tutorial series. Today I'm going to show you guys how I add head bobbing, uh, weapon lag, so like the weapon like moves around when you turn, and some tricks for performance optimization in your FPS game. Um, if you haven't seen part one or part two, be sure to check those out before watching this one. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to go do is open up the player object and I'm gonna go to the create event and in the create event I'm gonna make this font bigger Oops. right off the bat I forgot to last time so I'm gonna do it first thing um, and down here where it says animation I'm going to add a, f a whole bunch of variables I'm gonna add a head bob head bob counter uh, Wep bob, uh, wep lag horizontal, wep lag vertical, and that's it. I'm gonna close that. Now in the uh, step event, I'm gonna open up this script weapon animation that we've made before. I'm gonna actually change it to weapon and camera animation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to modify this recoil thing that we did last time because I realized I kind of made a mistake because uh, this like this won't reach zero so it's just going to keep dividing it and um, if we do this it'll set it to zero and then we, we won't be doing that operation anymore. But now let's add head bob. So I'm going to make a, add a comment if move underscore f e uh, is not equal to zero or move s is not equal to zero so we're going to check if we are moving in any direction and we're going to write if head bob counter i don't know if you have to like reset this but we're gonna i'm gonna i'm just gonna make it because that's how i that's how i have it already set up and it works else head bob counter equals zero so we're it's gonna just roll it over when it hits three six I don't know if you have to do that but I was gonna do it anyway and now we'll, we'll do head bob equals sign of head bob counter divided nope head bob counter divided by two like that and the weapon bob wep bob equals the sign of head bob counter divided by two closing parenthesis divided by two and um, under that we'll have else put an else under that uh, head bob count equals zero and if the absolute value of head bob is greater than or equal to some really small number it doesn't really matter Head bob times equals 0 0.9. Um, if absolute value of weapon bob <laughs> is greater than or equal to 0 0.001, weapon bob times equals 0 0.9. And you can mess with these numbers. What these numbers do, what these numbers do is it's essentially how fast the uh, weapon position kind of resets when you stop moving weapon and head position so let's go ahead and close out of this and let's go to the draw event I will open up draw camera and like with uh, we did this somewhere else but I'm gonna put these on a new line I don't remember which code we did that in but I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of these on their own line so it's easier to see because we have the font so huge and um, under player height, I'm going to go plus head bob times 2. I found that times 2 works pretty good. And um, z2 plus head bob times 2. And we can close out of that. And let's test the game to see if we have head bob now. Now, the amount that I've set it to is it, it should just be like a little bit, but that's how I, that's how I personally like it, just subtle. And we can see if we run around. 
it's harder to, it's hard to see because it is pretty subtle but if we go up to the wall we can see that we are indeed like moving up like bouncing up and down when we run so um, that's good that's what we wanted you can you can probably like go in and change you could make this like times four and see how let's, let's just make time times four and see how it looks will probably be a lot more obvious yeah just for fun I'm gonna make it times 40 oh wow okay and that's what happened yep so yeah <laughs> now yeah, whatever let's set it back to two now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close out of the player I'm gonna open the gun object and I'm gonna go to the draw GUI where we're drawing the sprite oh yeah this was the other part where we put them on a line um, and I'm gonna add some local variables here I'll add W equals obj player dot webfob h equals obj player dot head bob. So we're gonna be taking advantage of both of these. The weapon bob basically this will make it move side to side, and the head bob makes it move up and down. That's what we're using them for. So um, under our x argument for where it says one where we put 1000 I'll put W times 28 plus W times 28 like this and under Y I'm gonna go ahead and put plus H times 28 I just found that 28 again like 28 seems to work pretty good for the current how it's currently set up right so let's uh, run this and see how that looks Okay, yeah, so our weapon now moves up and down and also kind of side to side in a figure eight pattern. So that's pretty good. We're making some progress. Now another interesting thing you can do is, this, is you can actually, you could put, you could uh, add a little bit of rotation to it. So I'm gonna go put W times two here where we have the rotation. Minus W times two, excuse me. And then yeah, that gives it like you know, a little extra flair, I guess. <laughs> I like it. Looks pretty good. Now, um, now we're gonna do some weapon lag stuff. So, like when you look around, we want the gun to kind of like lag behind the camera. Most uh, modern FPS games do that, and it it does look. I think it looks pretty good even with sprites. So, um, when I'm gonna, so open up your player object, and. Uh, and in the step event in the mouse look script, open that up. And like, I guess right here, I'm gonna add some more code, weapon lag. And we already created our weapon lag variables. So wep lag horizontal minus equals, this is just gonna be the same thing as um, this actually. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna copy it and then instead of divided by eight, though, I'll make it's I'll I like to use divided by forty, divided by forty, and then this is going to be the same thing as this. And again, I like to divide it by forty, um, just because it works. Divided by forty works. Um, yeah, and um, now under at the bottom of this, I'm going to add some more code. Reset weapon lag so this is like how it will move back to, this is the part where it'll like move back to its original position otherwise it would just kind of like move all over the place and not stay where it's supposed to so if absolute value weapon lag horizontal greater than or equal to some small number weapon lag horizontal divided equals 1.1 else web lag or divided by no equals zero <laughs> and I'm just gonna copy and paste this for the vertical variable change it to vertical and that's all you have to do for that now let's go back into the gun object Oh, it's already open. Open the sprite. 
draw a sprite thing. And I'm going to add a couple more variables. Lag h, whoop, var lag h, obj player web lag horizontal, var lag v equals obj player player dot web lag vertical. And we'll add these to the x and y arguments. So lag h, and I found that lag h times 3 is pretty good, multiplying it by 3, and lag v times 3. Um, again, yeah, you can change these however you want uh, to suit your game the way you want it. And let's run it and see how that looks. Okay, so yeah, now when we turn, the weapon like will lag behind the camera slightly. Looks, I think it looks pretty cool. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there is one more thing. Like again, like you could. You can. I like to do this. I like to add like a little bit of rotation. So um, maybe like put lag horizontal times 0.2 or something in there, so that we rotate just like a tiny amount when we turn. Maybe that's a little too much rotation, but you get the idea, right? So I, you know, you can play with these values however you want, make them look so you can make the game just look really good. Um, I'll leave it like that for now. Now, for these are the next thing is like really important when you're making a 3D game in Game Maker. Um, you want the game to run good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the Control Object, open the Create Event, and I'm gonna add a couple of um, functions here that will help with performance. So the first one is D3D Set Culling, and what this does is when it's set to true, you don't have uh, it won't draw any like the back faces of any polygons so basically that's just all the polygons cut in half like the your cat poly count is just cut in half so you know that's that's good and the other one is d3d set hidden Oop. and this will perform depth tests on all the polygons and it will not draw any that are not visible to the camera so that's um, what that will do but the thing with d3d set culling is that you have to be careful because that it won't draw back faces right like I said so if we run the game right now we can see that the floor is not being drawn so what you have to do when you have that is um, we'll go into our floor and we just want to flip it so I'm gonna take this X plus W and I'm just gonna make it the first argument instead of the second X argument and then that will effectively just flip the normals so we can now we can see our ground again and um, but yeah that's if when you use um, D3D set culling just make sure like y it'll probably be some trial and error but um, yeah that's all you have to do to be able to see your ground again and one more thing that we can actually do to help with performance is well let's open up oops let's open up our wall in all of these, we've um, we have a local variable called text and background get texture equals the texture background we want. But we don't really need to be calling this every time. So what we can do is just um, this. I like to do this is um, I guess in my in my control object create event, I'll make a new script and I'll call it uh, load textures and I'll just put them in global variables. So I'll just make global var text floor and then text floor equals background get texture. Uh, we'll just basically do the same thing. Uh, global var text brick. Text brick equals background get texture. BG underscore brick. And then when we go in our in our wall object, we can just get rid of that. Actually, no, we don't need to get rid of that. Actually, we can just make that equal to um, text brick. That way, we don't have to change all of these. And same for our floor as well. Yeah. And yeah, we can run it, and it's gonna look exactly the same. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. Looks the same. But yeah, no, anyway, I just wanted to finish off this tutorial by giving you some pointers and um, showing you how to do the head bob thing and the weapon lag, which I think looks amazing. But yeah, hopefully this was a gr uh, good series. Um, I hope to do more tutorials in the f near future on hopefully some in Game Maker Studio 2, just because you know I know that uh, 1.4 is kind of obsolete now. Um, you know, with their, they've stopped updating it and stuff. So anyway, yeah. But yeah. Um, and if you're subscribed for my devlogs on Red Hot Vengeance, uh, I'm going to start working on that again really soon. Expect a new devlog sometime. Maybe not soon, but there will be another one. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, but yeah, no, until the next video, uh, see you later.